Hey there! Welcome back to the Noctis on YouTube. Air Force One is one of the important icons of the United States globally and specifically the presidential office in the air. Whenever the president visits another country or travels domestically, he is accompanied by a luxurious jumbo jet equipped with advanced technology. Most of the general public perceives this presidential aircraft as a floating office with various high-tech facilities. However, there are two interesting facts about Air Force One that are less known to the wider public. Air Force One is not technically an aircraft. It is a radio call sign for any U.S. Air Force aircraft carrying the President of the United States. Once the President boards an Air Force aircraft, it is immediately designated as Air Force One by the crew and air traffic controllers to avoid confusion with other aircraft in the area. If the President is on an Army aircraft, it is called Army One, and when he uses his private helicopter, it is referred to as Marine One. Nevertheless, the general public tends to refer to the physical aircraft as Air Force One. Currently, there are two aircraft that regularly fly under this designation, two Boeing 747-200B jets that closely resemble each other. These aircraft are known as VC-25A, with tail numbers 28000 and 29000. Both of these aircraft have a similar basic shape to a standard Boeing 747-200B with nearly identical capabilities. These planes are as tall as a six-story building and as wide as a city block. Each aircraft is powered by four General Electric CF680C2B1 jet engines, each providing 56,700 pounds of thrust. Their maximum speed ranges from 630 to 700 miles per hour, with a peak altitude of 45,100 feet. Each aircraft has a fuel capacity of 53,611 gallons and a maximum weight of 833,000 pounds when prepared for long-distance missions. With their tanks filled, these planes can fly halfway around the world. Despite its similarities to the regular three-decked 747, the interior of this aircraft is vastly different from that of a commercial 747. In the following section, we will delve deeper into the aspects that distinguish the VC-25A from conventional passenger planes. The modified Boeing 747 aircraft currently serving as Air Force One can truly be called a floating home. In terms of size, this aircraft might surpass most houses we are familiar with. With a spacious floor area of 4,000 square feet, there is ample room to move around inside the deck. But what exactly is inside? At the front of the aircraft, right above the plane's nose, we find the cockpit. Just in front of the cockpit, on the nose of the aircraft, there is an in-flight refueling probe allowing Air Force One to refuel mid-air for extended flights as needed. Navigating the interior, which encompasses 4,000 square feet, most of the aircraft resembles more of a luxury hotel or executive office than a plane, except, of course, for seat belts on each seat. The main lower deck primarily serves as a cargo hold, while the majority of the passenger space is on the middle deck, and the upper deck is typically dedicated to advanced communication equipment. Following in the footsteps of the cockpit, we find the crew rest area, where pilots and other support crew members can relax and rest. While this space is mainly used by the flight crew, there is also a separate lounge on the lower deck for other crew members. On the plane, the President has a private suite that includes a bedroom, bathroom, gym and a private office. All the furniture on this plane is custom made by expert craftsmen. Not far from there, there is a spacious conference room that serves as the President's dining area. 
Senior staff have their own workspaces, while other staff members also have spaces to carry out their duties and for relaxation. For the journalists accompanying the President's journey, there is a separate area and, of course, enough space to ensure the aircraft crew can work efficiently. In total, Air Force One can accommodate 70 passengers and 26 crew members with maximum comfort. Air Force One has a mythical and mysterious aura, especially because access to it is limited for most of us. Even political guests and journalists are usually not allowed to see the entire aircraft, with the Air Force tightly guarding specific details about the aircraft's configuration. Nevertheless, some official and unofficial sources have provided a general overview of the plane's contents, although there has been no official confirmation of how all these elements are integrated. And if anyone were to share such information, they would likely be asked to stop for national security reasons. From what we know, like most Boeing 747 aircraft, Air Force One has three floors. As seen in television clips about Air Force One, passengers can enter the plane through three different doors. The door often used by the President to board and disembark from the plane, often with a wave of the hand, is the door leading to the middle floor, with a wheeled staircase attached to the aircraft. Journalists typically enter the plane through the rear door, ascending the staircase to the middle floor, where they find a press area resembling the first-class section of regular commercial planes, complete with comfortable and spaciously wide seats. Along with its unusual passenger spaces, Air Force One has been equipped with various technologies that set it apart from conventional jet aircraft. Because Air Force One is the aircraft that transports the President, and some journeys can be quite long, it has been equipped with various special features that are not available on regular commercial planes. Next, along the corridor, there is a kitchen. This kitchen is much larger than those found on regular commercial planes and can accommodate three staff members, a chef, sous chef and bartender. They can prepare gourmet meals for about 100 people and have enough food supplies to prepare a total of 2,000 dishes. Inside the back of the President's office, there is a complete medical suite equipped with equipment such as a defibrillator, a blood supply and all the necessary tools for providing emergency first aid on the plane. In fact, this room can function as an operating room if we needed. Have uh, we have suction Whenever the President is on board the aircraft, a licensed doctor is always present on the plane, ready to handle various emergency scenarios. Unlike a regular Boeing 747, this plane has retractable stairs available at both the front and back entrances. These stairs lead down to the lower floor, with crew members and staff accessing the upper floor via internal stairs. The plane also features an independent luggage loading system, eliminating dependence on airport facilities which could pose a security risk. One of the standout features of this aircraft is its extensive electronic technology. In the rear portion of the crew rest area, there's an advanced communication hub. This room contains about 240 miles of cables, twice as many as a standard Boeing 747, to support 85 phones and 20 televisions on board. Furthermore, the communication room is equipped with the latest radar, tracking and defense systems, fully protected from electromagnetic interference that might occur from a nuclear blast. The phone system is designed for normal air-to-ground connections as well as secure lines. This allows the President and their staff to communicate with almost anyone worldwide while flying at tens of thousands of feet in the air. A special addition is the in-air refueling capability. Similar to the B-2 and other fighter jets, this ability lets Air Force One remain airborne indefinitely, which can be crucial in emergency situations. Much of the most advanced technology on this plane, like the avionics and defense systems, remains confidential. However, the Air Force asserts that these two aircrafts are military planes designed to shield themselves from aerial attacks. The plane is equipped with ECM, electronic countermeasures, to disrupt enemy radars. 
Moreover, the plane can launch chaff and flare from its wings, which can deflect radar-guided missiles and confuse heat-seeking missiles respectively. Underneath the plane, there's a device based on the Northrop Grumman ANAAAQ-24 system known as the Navy's Large Aircraft Infrared Countermeasure System, Don Lay RCM. The Lay RCM can deflect surface-to-air, SAM, and man-portable air defense, man-pads missiles. Lastly, the entire plane is coated with armor plating designed to withstand the impact of nuclear explosions on the ground, and all the windows are fitted with bulletproof glass. Every Air Force One flight is considered a military operation and is treated with utmost seriousness. The Air Force crew based at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland conducts meticulous inspections of the plane and runway before each flight. When the time comes, Marine One helicopter transports the President from the White House to Andrews Air Force Base. Teams spread throughout the base monitor any unauthorized aircraft activity in the area and have the authority to take decisive action if necessary. Before Air Force One takes off, the Air Force crew sends a C-141 Starlifter cargo aircraft to transport the President's motorcade to the destination. This collection of bulletproof limousines and vans, equipped with weapons, is responsible for the President's security on the ground. The President always carries the football, a bag containing the codes for nuclear weapon use. An Air Force officer constantly monitors the football throughout the flight, eventually handing it over to an Army officer upon landing. Like regular jet planes, Air Force One has a crew to operate the aircraft and a flight attendant team to prepare meals and clean the plane. This crew consists of rigorously selected military personnel with exceptional service records. Even the crew members responsible for preparing meals must operate with very high security levels. For instance, when shopping for food, they must disguise themselves and choose stores randomly to protect the President from potential poisoning threats. Inside the plane, the crew provides 24-hour first-class service. The crew members have a very rare privilege. They can interact with the President when he is in a relaxed setting. Every President since Harry Truman has formed close relationships with the flight crew and the final flight with Air Force One always becomes an emotional moment. It has been 33 years since the first delivery of the Air Force One Boeing 747 on January 26, 1990. Since that date, two 747-200B models, classified by the Air Force as VC-25A, are still in use to this day. However, these planes are aging and becoming outdated, ranking among the top 20 oldest active 747 aircraft. Currently, Boeing is working on modifying two undelivered 747-8 aircraft to replace the older variants. These are expected to serve as the future Air Force One fleet for the United States by the year 2027. That wraps up today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more awesome videos. Catch you in the next one.